So in this video we're going to find out about an unlikely source of gold, player versus player combat. Hello and welcome to Archvelder's Hacks with Archvelder and his amazing hacks. This is probably the best ever expansion for players who like to do player versus player combat to make gold in. For a decently geared player you can make more than 10,000 gold per hour without too much difficulty or extra effort. That's comparable with the best returns from raw gold farming in the game, which I think is really quite good since you are gearing up at the same time. And in this video I'll be showing you some really obscure tricks that will extend that quite a bit. So the first and most dramatic change is that you get these victorious contenders strong boxes from every win in any kind of bonus battleground. Now these patterns that you often find in the boxes can be sold directly on the auction house, often for thousands of gold. You won't sell all of these every time but these patterns are desirable. I sell about one of every five I put up on the auction house. Those of you who've tried selling items with very low sell rates will be wary about your inventory filling up fast. But that doesn't really happen with these items, provided you put them up on the auction house regularly. The patterns will account for well over half of your monthly profits from PvP, but the other stuff does add up as we'll see. In addition to the patterns, you'll get rousing ire. This is useful for crafting, and while it seems to have gone down in value, each ire still fetches 16 gold apiece. You'll also get marks of honour, and Blizzard never give any indication of how to monetize this. But the best option is generally saltwater potions, which are a 30% damage increase. That's a potion exclusive to PvP. These sell for 11 gold each, so you'll want to stack up a bunch of marks before you buy the potions that sell them. There are also faction specific gliders. I am not sure why anyone is buying these because the goblin gliders are generally much cheaper and do exactly the same thing. But if you can sell these for a decent price, by all means do so. I'm just a bit worried personally of investing in stuff which doesn't make any sense as a purchase. Now, there's a much more lucrative use of the Marks of Honor, and that's to buy gems in your faction capital from either Brave Stonehide in Orgrimmar for Horde or Sergeant Biggins in Stormwind. That's in the Hall of Champions. Make sure you don't buy any of the gems listed as bind on pickup. The gems here can be sold for over 100 gold, or a lot more in some cases. These are niche items that sell mainly to twinks, and for that reason you don't want to go too overboard on these, putting one of each type of gem up on the auction house at a time. Finally, you'll get some trash items from the boxes which can be worth anything from silver to 50 gold. Vendor it. Now, in addition to receiving these boxes, you can actually buy them for 5,000 honor of Selthorax in the Gladiator's Refuge in Valdraken. This option has the highest rate of average return on your honor, mainly because of the patterns. There is an alternative option which gives you straight raw gold, and that's to use what player versus player veterans have been doing for years. Buy and sell weapons and armor with honor, and then sell it back to the vendor. Now, it's not as simple as it seems because when you buy an item with honor, there is a buyback window of two hours. You don't want to have to wait two hours to sell these items, so the way around it is to equip the item, which automatically removes the two hour buyback window, and only then sell it back to the vendor. Now, if you don't do this and just use your honor on the boxes, you will eventually get a nice purple pattern and you will eventually sell that for tens of thousands of gold. And that will put you massively ahead of the vendoring weapons and armor strategy. But when you buy and sell items with honor, you get your gold right away. It's really nice just to cap honor and see over a thousand gold go straight into your bank. Just be aware you are trading a significant amount of gold on average for that instant gratification. Now, here's a weird forgotten trick you can use to acquire a valuable item just by killing stuff in battlegrounds. Go to the Timeless Isle in the southwest corner of Pandaria. If you go to this location here, there's a massive anthropomorphic yak that sells an item called Firewatcher's Oath. To purchase this item you will need 100 timeless coins and they can be accumulated in 30 seconds by killing the surrounding mobs and looting them. Now when you use this item it turns you into a translucent yak and gives you a 10 minute buff 
that while active means any killing blow in PvP will result in you receiving a bloody coin. You can buy a cool mount with enough of these, but for gold making purposes, we are interested in the vengeful Polkia Pet Pet, which requires a hundred bloody coins. Now, this item sells for around 8,000 gold on the auction house. Most pet butlers and completionists don't do PvP if they can avoid it and will happily pay this decent price for it. Don't overdo this. If you see more than a few up on the auction house at a time, you don't want to post it. It just creates weird porcupine inflation. But it essentially costs you nothing to get it and you will receive a nice payoff when you do sell one. Here's another trick. When the Dark Moon Fair is up, go to the entrance to the fair on Dark Moon Island and go to Gelvas Grime Gate near the entrance and receive a Dark Moon Adventurer's Guide. This item allows you to receive various quest items in exchange for killing various things. And what we are looking for in particular is three items. The Fallen Adventurer's Journal, Banner of the Fallen and Captured Insignia which all drop from looted corpses in PvP. These items sell for around a thousand gold. Again, don't overdo this. These items don't sell especially fast, but if there are no or only one or two such items on your auction house, it's worth posting them for a nice bonus every now and again. Now, this one is a specific bonus from Ashran. If you set up a garrison and create a gladiator sanctum, you will acquire a currency from Ashran called Broken Bones from Honourable Kills. You will acquire vast numbers of these very quickly, but they stack to a thousand, so it shouldn't be a problem keeping them in your bags. These can be turned in at the garrison for work orders, which take a day to process and then give you small quantities of gold. Essentially, this is a small stream of extra gold for doing nothing. You can speed up the process by looting your garrison cash and using the garrison resources you get to purchase rush orders from Sergeant Crowler for Alliance or Sergeant Grimjaw for Horde. These will allow you to turn your broken bones into raw gold instantly. There's a special opportunity to make gold in Alterac Valley. Nat Pagel's Guide to Extreme Angling is an item with a rare drop chance from looting player corpses there. This item was made useful during Legion when it formed part of the chain to get the corrupted Ashbringer appearance for the Paladin Legion artifact, and generally fetches over a thousand gold on the auction house, a lot more on realms which are focused on PvE rather than PvP. Again, this is a niche item, and it is not the sort of thing you can stack up and make hundreds of thousands of gold with. So don't go out of your way for this one. However, if you are queuing for Battlegrounds, you will get Alterac Valley quite a bit, and there will be many situations where your faction is pushing the enemy, where corpses are just lying around waiting to be looted. Potentially, it is a decent return for no real investment. Now, for those of you who want to make even more gold, I'd strongly recommend joining my Patreon, as we have one of the best ever raw gold farming exploits, which allows you to completely bypass instance lockout and farm dungeons endlessly. We also have an amazing one-click leveling method, which has proven to be the most popular exploit ever on my Patreon.